Being the dungeon master or game master can feel like a lot of work and responsibility. You're creating dozens and not hundreds of NPCs, locations, world lore, history, everything that your PCs don't directly control. Yet many of us who decide to run a game wouldn't trade it for the world. All that out of work is fun, exciting to see how your friends react and, well, sometimes break your world. After being a GM for nearly two decades now, I've learned a lot. So here are five things that you can work on in order to be a better GM. To make the games more fun for yourself and for your players. Number one is being ready to adapt. Now many GMs will have their perfectly created story, will make sure that everything is going according to plan, and then suddenly the players will do something that you don't expect. This will happen every time. I don't care how experienced of a GM you are, how well you think you know your friends. Somewhere, somehow, something will surprise you. And don't cringe and hate and be like, no, they're messing with my perfect story. How dare they as those players? No. You're here to tell a story together. If you don't want your characters to surprise you, you're not in the right medium. You should try writing a book or something where you can control the characters much easier. This is all about adapting, learning on the fly, going with what they want to do. Sure, there are some times you have to rein them in. They can go a bit too far. But it's far more fun for everybody if you're willing to work with them when they go completely off the rails and want to do something a little different. Embrace it. Don't try to fight your players every step of the way to protect your perfect world and story. Let them have their fun and have fun along with them as they you do control the consequences for their actions. Whether you need to clamp down and make sure that they realize that there are consequences to their actions or just embrace it, have fun, go off on the crazy adventure that you want with all of your friends and everyone will have a far better time in the process. Number two, taking notes. And I, I know what you might be thinking. This is from my player video. It's the player's job to take notes. The GM has all the notes that they prepare beforehand. Here is something that even I find myself doing as a GM and need to do better. Is during the session or immediately after while it's still fresh in your mind, write down notes. What are things that you notice that the players really grabbed onto? What is something that they said that could be really interesting? What did they discover in that session? What did they not discover that you planned on them discovering and now need to move that and make sure you realize that they learn it in another place in another section? Because perhaps they decided to go left instead of right. Well, okay, they didn't find it there. You just go ahead, pick it up and move it somewhere else. These are all so much easier if you actually take some notes of what happens during sessions. It can feel like a bit too much, like you've already taken down pages and pages of notes in between sessions for your preparation. But just making a few notes of what's happened during the campaign and what people figured out, enjoyed, and everything along those lines will make it so that you understand better what they're doing, what they want, and how they approach certain things, and you can be better prepared in the future. Speaking of which, number three is be prepared. It all depends on what way you're doing it, whether you're doing it digitally, in person, this being prepared means a little bit different for every game master as well. Some have to have 100 pages of notes before they feel ready to even start their campaign and need another, you know, 20 hours of preparation work during the time between sessions to make sure everything is perfect. Which sometimes I can fully understand. When you get to big moments, you want to have a lot of preparation, make sure everything's good. You want to make sure that you have all the maps ready that you need, whether for a dungeon or if you're playing online and you want to have maps for everywhere that the players go, you need to have those maps ready at a moment's notice to pull them out when they decide to go there. Make sure you have all your dice you need, your notes, whether they're physical or you have some Google Docs or wherever you keep your notes. Make sure that they're there. Make sure that you have snacks if you are one that incorporates food into your games or has pizza ready to just throw in the oven for during the session. Make sure that you have everything ready to go so that when the session comes around even GM's like me who have done it for almost 20 years now we can still get nervous right before the time comes the more preparation you have for anything to come the better you'll be able to feel comfortable in your GMing and be able to run a good session and not be constantly just worried that you're messing everything up 
Trust me, that will still happen as a GM. There's still some imposter syndrome we all suffer with. But having those preparations will definitely aid you in making sure that everything runs smoothly, both for yourself and your players, and everyone at the table. Number four, be descriptive. Now, this can be in a couple of different ways. There is the way that the world is beautiful, immersive, huge, up in your mind. It's amazing. You are the new Tolkien. You can tell the most amazing stories. Okay, Tolkien was a little too descriptive. Don't bore your players with descriptions, but you have to give them enough that they can visualize the world. You think things are obvious. You can see everything in your mind's eye. You know exactly what it looks like. But your players don't. They can't see into your brain and just pluck that image out and see it. So you have to describe things. Sen use all five senses that you can. Whether the air feels clammy in the swamp, whether it smells terrible as they're going into the garbage disposal of a dungeon, whether the sounds echo creepily off the halls as a taunting voice echoes back to them, telling them how unworthy they are, or some cackle. Sight is the most common one. Pretty much everyone always uses sight. But do remember, there are other senses that you can do. Add just a little bit of them here and there to really help bring your world to life. Now, do be aware that if you can sense that you're talking too much about describing every little thing, you will see it in your players. They will start checking out. So there is a fine balance, but if there are important details and things that you want to convey so that people understand what is going on, make sure you describe them. Use the descriptions that you have at your disposal to convey information in a way that will immerse you, your players, and allow them to love and learn the world as much as you do who created it. Number five, know what interests your players. Now, this isn't meaning that as a GM, you have to bend over backwards. You always have to use every little hook that your players have given you in their backstory to in every little adventure that they that you create. That's just going to be so tedious and going to become so samey if you keep having to use the exact same things over and over again. What this really means is know who your players are. You will quickly begin to learn that there are some that may check out when you're doing the talking bits in the more role-playing side where the more combat-heavy side would appeal to other types of players where the person who wants to be the face of the party and the leader might enjoy things more that might happen in the town. Or some, you know, might love to experiment and put things together and come up with weird combos that stretch the rules and hopefully in fun ways and not game-breaking ways. Those are a whole new different type of problem. But know what interests them. If you know that you have a party of people that are not ultra grindy hardcore people that need death at every turn unless you're making some really big boss encounter it probably doesn't matter all that much that you pour that you pour 10 hours into exactly making this in a perfectly deadly combat encounter so that if only they play everything exactly right could they barely scrape bot well if your players aren't into combat or have optimized characters they may either get slaughtered or just not necessarily care for that and if you continue to try and push something on your players that you know none of them are interested in, it's going to become disappointing for you and them when you are constantly clashing and not being able to agree and understand what each other wants. So understand what your players want. You don't have to make it all about what that one player wants because you'll find that your players do like an interesting variety of things in most groups. So you have to make sure that you have a variety of things and not to focus on the things that you know your players will ignore. As many GMs, you have a rich world and a rich history. Beautiful. Most of them aren't going to want to sit there for 30 minutes as you regale them with it. You may have one player that loves your lore so much that they will intently listen and take notes. But you're going to have a lot of other people that will quickly lose interest. To give that lore master that little tips and things that they want to keep them interested, but also make sure that it's not just a block of text that is going to make others gloss over. 
know what they want, and don't waste your time spending all your preparation and time in-game doing things that nobody is going to care about. This, it, that is, will quickly lead to people becoming disinterested and likely your group not wanting to meet anymore. So those are five things that I've learned over the time as a GM that certainly can help you to make sure that your party is more engaged. You are better understanding of what they want, they can understand what you want, and you can create and weave a story and a world together. Remember, though you're the game master, you're also a player at the table. It's there to be fun for you, and you aren't always just the big bad at the table. You work with everybody else there and make the story that you want to tell together. Thank you all for watching. I hope that was informative for you. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more. And as always, everyone, remember to be awesome. Till the next one, take care. Bye-bye.